the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. This covenant was given force of law in 1966. Article 2. Where not already provided for by existing legislative or other measures, each state party in the present covenant, which would include Canada, undertakes to take the necessary steps in accordance with its constitutional process. They specified what operation of law, what steps would be taken or would have to be taken, and it was in accordance with its constitutional process and with the provisions of the present covenant to adopt such laws or other measures as may be necessary to give effect to the rights recognized in the present covenant. Canada, as a member to this covenant, as a state party that signed upon this covenant, was under obligation to make sure that the rights and freedoms that were enumerated in the covenant found their expression within domestic law, more specifically within its constitutional process. They, meaning Canada, were under obligation to adopt such laws and other measures that would be necessary to give effect to the rights that were recognized in the present covenant. Canada had the obligation to make sure that there were a medium, there was a way available for the rights and freedoms that were expressed in these covenants to be expressed domestically upon their land. After World War II, many human beings, many men and women all across this world were very upset. We were horrified, disgusted, by the actions that government bodies had taken all across this world. More specifically, the German government. How they relegated the Jewish human being to nothing more than the scum of the earth. And how they took many of millions of lives because of this belief concerning their statue. After this war, men came together. And though for generations, and thousands of years, there had been natural rights available to man. There had been natural rights always within existence, maybe not always recognized by government bodies, but nevertheless, they had been in operation. Now, after the atrocities of World War II, men decided that they wanted to express these rights and place them down upon a document called covenants or the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that us as individuals, we could have something to point to, something to express to, that enumerated what was already commonly recognized throughout the land or throughout the world. So after World War II, this is precisely what happened. Men came together and they erected, they brought forth the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and they brought forth the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. They, draw up, they drew up the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. And these expressions of law, these rights, these freedoms that were enumerated, were meant to be a building block, were meant to be used as a foundation for all of us, all of us to point to, and to acquire, and to use, and to express, and to promote. They are there for us. The Constitution Act of Canada, 1982. It states that the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees the rights and freedoms set out in it, subject only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law. Therefore, they are saying that the rights and freedoms that are expressed, that are enumerated in the Constitution itself, they can be subjected to reasonable limits. The human rights and fundamental freedoms, they can be limited. However, they can only be limited by prescribed law, a prescription of law, an operation of law. Now, some individuals think that Canada has the right to just limit human rights and fundamental freedoms any way they want. And some politicians and some who work for the justice system actually act like this is a power 
that they possess. Nevertheless, when you look into the International Covenants, it clearly states that the State Party, Canada, does indeed have the right to limit, to limit fundamental rights and freedoms, and they can use prescription law to do so. However, the degree that they can limit our fundamental human rights and freedoms is extremely controlled. When we look into the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, Article 5, it reads as follows. Nothing in the present covenant may be interpreted as implying for any state, that includes Canada, group or person, any right to engage in any activity or perform any act aimed at the destruction of any of the rights and freedoms recognized herein, or at their limitation to a greater extent than is provided for in the present covenant. It is clearly bringing forth and clearly showing us that the limitation that the state party is allowed to do, Canada, the way they limit fundamental rights and freedoms, is supposed to be controlled by the International Covenant. The expressions of law, the, the permissions that the International Covenant grants the domestic state parties to limit fundamental rights and freedoms is the operations of law or the framework whereby with Canada becomes bound, where Canada must operate under. And if we find that Canada is limiting or not allowing the expression of our fundamental rights and freedoms here in this land, then they are failing in their obligations and they are not being held accountable to this article, for they do not have the right to just appropriate any law, to just make up any type of limitation upon our rights and freedoms. They have to follow the operations of law that are present within the international covenants. And if they don't, then they are in illegal actions. In the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 8, one of the fundamental rights and freedoms that we have as a human being is that we cannot be held in servitude. This same expression, this same right, comes out in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 4. It states that no one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Now we think it's funny sometimes when we hear this, but when you look at the definition of a Canadian citizen, you see it is a human being that has been rendered a person, an artificial person, and that this person has taken a pledge of allegiance, a pledge of servitude to Her Majesty the Queen, and that through this pledge, through this servitude, they try, Canada, to apply the laws against the Canadian citizens. For the laws, the enactments and regulations, they apply strictly and only, most of the time, to the person, the Canadian citizen. So, by allowing you or making you take the designation of person, they can then begin to remove your fundamental rights and freedoms as a human being. Now, the Constitution Act of 1982 is the expression of the international law that Canada was under. Now, you look in Article 7 and it states that everyone has the right to liberty. And in Articles 2, it states that everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. Freedom of association. Through the person, the Canadian citizen, they are trying to render you a subject, a servant of Her Majesty. However, through their own Constitution Act, you have the right to liberty. You do not have to be held in servitude. And you have the freedom of association as a human being. And this is an operation of law that Canada is under obligation to respect due to the International Covenants. Let us look to the other expressions of law, some of them, that Canada was under obligation to express within its domestic law, within its constitution. We know that through the International Covenant, it clearly stated that the state party, Canada, would be under the obligation to express these rights and freedoms in their Constitution Act. Now, in Article 18 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, we find the following freedoms expressed. 
everyone shall have the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. In the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 18, we find the exact same operation. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. These fundamental rights and freedoms that were granted or that were expressed that could be claimed on behalf of a human being were now placed upon Canada, placed upon their shoulders to make sure that these operations of law, that these freedoms came out in their domestic law. When we look into the Constitution Act of Canada, 1982, Article 2, we find these same expressions of law. We find these same operations of law flowing forth from the Constitution Act. It states, everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. If you are familiar with any of my videos that I've placed at YouTube, or if you have watched the majority of them, you will know that everyone in the Constitution Act of Canada is considered the human being. The human being, the man and the woman, can take that designation. Now everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. Freedom of conscience and religion, freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression. This is the same exact operations of law that are expressed internationally, and they find their fulfillment domestically within the Constitution Act of Canada. The International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, Article 11, it brings forth, it expresses and shows us the rights and freedoms that have been guaranteed or recognized for everyone, for that human being. Now, everyone has the right to an adequate standard of living for himself and his family, including adequate food, clothing, and housing, and to the continuous improvement of living conditions. In the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 25, it states that everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of himself and of his family, including food, clothing, housing, and medical care. These are rights that are exposed to be guaranteed to you as a human being by your state party. Here in Canada, they are supposed to be guaranteed to us. What is transpiring is that through prescribed law, they are not taking away our designation of human being. They are rendering us subjects and servants through the subject or through the designation of citizen. And then they are no longer obligated to us as human beings. And they are no longer obligated to these articles of law. However, in the Constitution Act of Canada, 1982, Article 7, we find it written that everyone has the right to the security of the person. You, as a human being, this is expressed in the Constitution Act. You have the right to the security of your human being. And that security includes adequate food, clothing, and housing continued improvement of your living condition, your good health and well-being of you and your family, and great medical care. These are the obligations that the state party had towards you as a human being. But to negate these obligations, to shake off and get away from these obligations, men, through words, found a way to change our designations, that being to render us that person, that artificial being, that subject, that servant of Her Majesty. Therefore, Her Majesty is not under obligation to respect all of these rights and freedoms. We have a right to be secure and enjoy a living, not pursue after a living. Just because you and I are a human being, these rights have been granted to us. The government, the state party, has an obligation towards you concerning your security, your freedom as a human being. There are many rights that are recognized on your behalf, and until you begin to exercise them, they are of no profit to you. You have the right to security as a human being. This right brings forth the promises that you just saw. 
promises such as food, clothing, housing, and the continued improvement of your living conditions. None of these rights are fulfilled in the social systems that are in operation of Canada. These systems fall short to fulfilling the obligations that Canada has. Thereby, there has to be another mechanism, another measure that is available to us here in Canada to have these rights and freedoms respected. Otherwise, if there is not another measure available to us, then Canada has indeed failed in their obligations. We know that these social systems fail in their obligations, but they are only for the Canadian citizen, for the person in citizenship. Therefore, the other operations of law that are in existence in Canada have to be or must be for the fulfillment of our human rights and fundamental freedoms.